meeting of the uh, Wastewater Support Committee to order, please. My name is Chris Harlow, and we've got uh, one absentee member. That's our chairman, um, Sharon uh, Flager. We miss her, and we wish her well. But we have Ann Howe here, and as well as uh, Peter Hughes to my uh, left and Noreen Donahue to my right. Welcome, and uh, I think first we'd like to have a, a period of public comment. If you make a comment, please introduce yourself to us, and we're glad you're here. Okay, the second, the third order of business is to approve the minutes of April 3rd, 2018. Chair and I move we approve the minutes of April 3rd, 2018 as presented. I second. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing no discussion, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of accepting the minutes, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Carried. Uh, we have as our fourth item the update from the town administrator, and we'll uh, postpone that, we hope, and not cancel it if Chris can come. Number five is a discussion. We've got two items under that. The recent meetings feedback. I'm especially interested in that because I was unable to attend these meetings. And then some discussion about public outreach. We've had some public meetings on uh, 413, 417, and 419. Uh, could I have some Feedback, please, from people who attended that or watched it on television. Peter? Uh, the 417 meeting was uh, an opportunity for me to present or meet with the, um, uh, the realtors in the town of Harwich. Um, did it at the community center. It's part of every week they have what they call a house tour. And so um, they get about 35 realtors in a room at the community center and um, they had about a half an hour to talk to them. Um, it's still amazing to me that some folks, it's like, we're doing sewers, you know. <laughs> it, it's sort of sometimes a new topic, but I walked them through the whole, you know, the whole uh, shebang, if you will. The, um, the East Harwich cartoon or map that shows with the street identification on it is very helpful. The uh, phasing uh, spreadsheet we have with the color coding is very helpful to people, as I keep telling the realtors, the date to remember in East Harwich is June of 2021 when the first low happens. One of their big concerns is, as realtors, when do they need to disclose, say, to folks in East Harwich that the sewer is coming? And there was some discussion back and forth. The consensus is, if you're dealing with a property out there, it's time to say, okay, sewer is coming. Um, particularly assuming a success at town meeting and then a subsequent ballot vote, then we know we're going forward. Um, so, so they will uh, keep being reminded um, in the realty community that um, they need to make people aware of that and, you know, uh, offer us as a resource, if you will, to flow information. I have another 10 or so realtors I'm meeting with tomorrow. Uh, so I have all this material stacked up here. Again, it's just, you know, the more you can educate people, the better off you are. So. Noreen? Uh, Peter, I'm um, just hearing that and also hearing the um, comments from the April 19th meeting from um, realtors about their concerns. It makes me wonder if maybe in like six months, is that a regular meeting of the realtors? Every um, week. Every week, yeah. okay. It seems like something we might want to follow up every three months or so, or because yeah, they get, might be the lead Yeah, you person. have to get on their agenda, so I think the thing to do there is, um, you know, we just sort of put it on our calendar to, right. to go back to um, uh, the person that organizes it and runs it, and as we have new material and whatnot, that we could um, be updating it for them. Right. So. Am I too? Excuse me, by the, way, by the way, a lot of the realtors, you know, just because you happen to go to the Harwich uh, event, a lot of them also do business in Chatham, so a lot of them have had the experience of, um, you know, what it means in Chatham to get into, you know, the sewer issues. So a lot of them are well-versed on that topic. 
Um, just not a lot of details on, you know, what the schedule is and how it's and that kind of thing. So, okay. you know. So do I understand you right then that the uh, realtors are supposed to be proactive? They introduce uh, the idea of the wastewater program and not wait for the client or the customer well, what I'm saying, initiated. what I'm saying is that that a realtor has a fiduciary responsibility um, to let the customer know that hey, there is something called the sewer connection that maybe have you know is scheduled to happen in the next three years, and we just want you to wear that because there'll be an implication. You're going to have to abandon your you know abandon your old system. You're going to have to put it you know connect to the new system, and there are implications of doing that. Um, there's a lot of discussion about, well, you know, if we're six months away and, and you know, when you transfer a property these days, you have to do a Title V inspection, right? You have to get a nice little certificate from the Board of Health. And so part of the discussion was, well, you know, if I have someone who's close, what do they do, blah, 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 blah. And so I said, you know, the Board of Health is looking at these things. They, they have, a, you know, a whole laundry list. We're going to start to hear about some of that stuff today, I presume. And, um, you know, there'll be folks that, that have some um, issues and problems and looking for some variances and whatnot. But I did make it very clear to them, don't expect to get a variance that says you're not going to hook up. The variance that might be, gee, you get an extra six months or something if there's a hardship. I mean, not a long time. We've had that discussion before. So. Pam? Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear the maps were helpful. Have we moved on to the actual final list? Um, I'm asking that because, of course, there are, there are streets and areas that are uh, on the edge. That map has the, the, the latest that we have, which has the street list on it, and in some okay. cases has the house numbers. And yeah. that's the final one. Well, it's final as of as we know it today. As far as we know. That's my understanding. Our, thank you. Yeah. This, um, for the public's benefit, since it was mentioned, is on our website under the category recently added documents. I think it's like the third item down. And as far as we know, it is the final list of properties. And in small print, it includes um, the list of streets, which can be blown up if you can't see that well, into a bigger list. But um, it'd be nice to see it. We will eventually have them a little bit bigger. But um, it's here. And, and also, it wouldn't be very hard for one of us to reprint this in a um, usable fashion. So we have it. But not one with, uh, sorry, not one with uh, street numbers yet yes. because yeah. the actual house address? Yeah. Okay. If you see, it says like from oh, number got this it. to Thank this. Thank you. And I think for reference on that, on the lower right-hand corner, if you see the date, April 17th, 2018, that's the designation I use. So that, that's the, quote, latest, end quote, April 17th. Speaking of the 17th, uh, yes, oh, Larry. Uh, could we have a brief report on anyone who has seen the uh, video of the seventeenth meeting or attended it? You mean the nineteenth? Nineteenth. Okay, yeah, sorry. Center? Yes. Well, sure, since it's a Sunday, it would be on the seventeenth. All right. Do you want to identify yourself, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Larry Valentine, uh, Selectman. I just, uh, just two quick comments. I did uh, meet with a couple of realtors after Peter's uh, presentation, and they and they're very uh, thankful for that for that information. Uh, it helped them a lot. The question that did come up uh, has come up a couple of times, and I'm sure in this meeting too, uh, was we need to sort out uh, where the where we expect to have easements because that's going to be coming forward and. And we know we're going to have to have some easements where the, you know, for instance, where the pumping stations are. Not nowhere else, but that's the job we have. You know, that's the town, next town and consulting chores to sort that out for realtors so they have that information. That's Larry, through, you, through Chris. Larry, where else, what, pumping stations, obviously, what else requires an easement? I'm not sure uh, exactly where the uh, main lines will be going on the street and where they're crossing over. It may or may not, but it's one thing we need to investigate and, and get some certainty on. For instance, uh, we have some have some had have had some detox in neighborhoods about uh, combining uh, systems into one uh, small pump where we have gravity maybe not work and it's more economical. 
that would require probably some easement to make that work. There's some just some fine tuning, and they were anxious to know about that. And if I could, I, I will I will say that uh, David Young, I believe, and in, 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 uh, at that meeting um, at the community center, did talk about the potential. You know, some of these pumping stations could be underground, for instance, and the only thing you might see is a generator, you know, backup emergency generator sitting on the surface. It could be a little house, but you know, not not large um, structure. Interestingly enough, at the uh, at the realtor meeting, some folks thought that um, they get a little confused about where the boundary is between Harwich and Chatham, and on um, Morton Street in Chatham. There's a big brick building that's being put up by the town, and some people thought that was a pumping station for the sewer system, and they're like, whoa, this is a big thing. Well, what they didn't realize was Chatham has three new wells, water wells, because they had some issues with potential contamination, and that is the pumping system and treatment system for the water, drinking water, not wastewater, so. Thank you. Uh, we left that uh, meeting of uh, April 19th. Anyone make a comment about that, please? I'll say it was well attended. Um, I think every time we hold a meeting like that, there are always some folks that the topic seems new to them, I think, you know, which is, which is good. That's why you do it. Um, I think people were there to learn. Uh, they listened intently. There was one gentleman that was visibly upset, I would just say, uh, because he recently, uh, by recently I mean within the last couple of years, you know, spent X amount of dollars putting a new septic system in, and now, you know, here comes the sewer. So, um, you know, some of that is um, educating the public as to, you know, what the plan is. We can never do enough education. I thought the feedback was, you know, was fairly positive at that meeting. Um, people, at least that I saw there, were just thirsting for knowledge, trying to understand what it means for them. And um, I think appreciating um, how many people in the, the town side are, you know, working on this problem and, and trying to, you know, get the best answers they can. Noreen? Um, I watched it on TV, wasn't able to make it back for it. And um, I thought it went very well. It was a lot of information. Um, well attended. Um, I give Pete a little credit for walking in cold <laughs> and um, not repeating too much what, what had gone on. He seemed to be able to pick up on those vibes and represent us. But overall, all the presenters, I thought it was, you know, some new information, some detailed information, um, you know, really great. Um, the questions, you know, I thought the crowd was was very respectful and interested, and um, yes, there was you know an angry voice um, that I, <clears throat> the, you know, you feel bad when people get a little personal. But in general, I thought the questions were you know really on mark. Um, the two takeaways, if I had to use that phrase, um, I would take from that would be the gentleman that mentioned yes, we have to educate ourselves. We're coming to these things. But we really need tutors, you know, and um, I thought he spoke very well about that topic, that he feels there is a lack in the town. They really need tutors. One thing to have a meeting like that and have the information out there and tell people we had to go and get it. But, you know, I'm certainly plenty of time left. But over the next period, we obviously have to go into the community in one way or the other um, more with that. The other um, with those issues and, and really help people and make it easy and um, pleasant if possible. Well, I think on our side the responsibility is the guidebook that's the being guidebook started. That's right. And so you know, not that we need to get that done in two days, but I think in the next couple of months we need right. to get that put yeah. together the best we can and start letting people use it. I agree. That would be the next most important in yeah. my mind thing that we're doing. And, you know, I also agree over many months, you know, maybe by the fall and be back to Ann and back and forth. Um, the other takeaway I would take from the meeting, though, was something that just came up um, in this room just a few weeks ago, and it was the question of fees. Um, and, you know, I do think it's a little difficult when you say to people, you have to do this. You're mandated to do this. Uh, we're not going to make everybody in the town do it. 
we're only going to make 50% of the people do it. And some people won't have to do it for 40 years. But you have to do this in the next three years. And by the way, we're going to charge you a fee for that. You know, so, you know, I, I don't have an answer to that. Um, I understand the town has to recoup its um, costs. Um, but the question is, who do you recoup those costs from? You know, if you have an inspector and other people, do you recoup it from the person you are forcing to take this action? Or do you recoup it from the tax base or some other method? So it just might be time to start to think out of the box a little bit in terms of how we present that to people. Um, it seems like an added slap in the face, um, you know, to uh, um, people to hear, you know, the rose bush is going, it's $10,000, the trench is coming into my yard, I understand all that, and now I have to write out a check for a fee. So uh, that, that is not my comment, that's the takeaway from the meeting. Thank you. Anyone else on that subject? I just, right. I just thought in terms of, uh, you know, the feedback, I, I appreciate, I thought it was a good meeting. I thought over, over 80 people, uh, as people were getting up to leave, I saw a lot of smiles, a lot of kind of thumbs up saying that thank you for the information. Uh, there was one un unfortunate. You know, I do think that, that the comment that was made, though, that his system was two and a half years uh, already in, brand new, fairly new, two and a half years. It's going to take us two years to construct. It's going to take, you know, probably up to two years to have him uh, be authorized to connect. And then he has the ability to petition uh, the Board of Health. So, it, you know, it, it's unfortunate that I think sometimes people say things in, say things in anger and, and don't really want to have a, a conversation. Uh, but I think in that circumstance, you know, if his system is six and a half years old, uh, before he has to really change it out, uh, he's going to have that opportunity to get a little bit of an extension and, and to make it more worth his, his while. I do think uh, after the meeting uh, and even during the meeting, I, I think when Megan and Dan had brought up about uh, offering to do kind of sit down sessions with folks, I think that's a, a, a good idea. I did have a gentleman come up uh, afterwards and had said to me, he goes, well, you didn't really answer my question. And, you know, the, the question that he had asked was, why can't we do more? And, you know, it is kind of interesting because I come from uh, my own experience and seeing what Chatham has done. They haven't really done that much to, to educate and help people. And I think where he was going was, is there a way for the town to help to facilitate uh, if there's someone, a, a company that's going to put pipe in the street, can we bring people together, bring neighborhoods together, and have them have discussions, and maybe in those discussions have the installers be at that same meeting. So we, we will do some of that to, to try to bring people together to see if there's a, a, a good opportunity to have people um, work it out on their own. As I had indicated to him, if the town does the hookup at, at the home level, Number one, it changes dramatically the original plan that was uh, laid out. Uh, so that's not something. And then secondly, if we do do it, we have to pay prevailing wage. We have certain process procedures we need to follow that tend to be more expensive than what they can get in the private sector. So I do think uh, in, in terms of the, the fee for the decommissioning of the uh, septic system, we're not really being super creative. Uh, we're actually just that fee already exists for doing it. Uh, the town of Chatham has that fee uh, in the neighborhood of $100, and I think that that's probably what you'll see. It's not designed to be a slap in the face. It's just designed to be a, uh, a decommissioning of one uh, mm -hmm. element and an introducing introduction of a, uh, another element. But we could certainly look at that fee as, as we go forward. And, uh, Peter? If I could, I think the, the fee, the, the sense I got from the questions at the meeting at the community center, the fee is more the ongoing annual or semi-annual fees for being, oh, I got you. you know, the sewer fee, if you will, you know, numbers like as high as four or five hundred dollars, you know, a year, that kind of thing. I think that's the fee that that I thought people were paying more attention to than the abandonment fee. Okay, if I yeah, if I stand you know. corrected, I stand corrected. You know, in in terms of that, just a, a, I know I've had a couple of uh, people come up to me too, and, and have kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to make it somewhat consistent with what the water fee is. So, as we take water out of the ground and we process it and make it safe for people to to drink, we obviously have to take the water that is used that goes back into the system, and we have to clean it so we can put it back into the environment. So it's that process of of cleaning and making the water, whether we ship it to you or whether we're taking it from you. 
uh, safe to, to reintegrate into the environment. Uh, and that every gallon has a cost uh, associated with it. So we, we will obviously try to monitor that for uh, how Chatham does it. I do believe the economies of scale uh, makes a lot of sense to, to partner with Chatham uh, in that regard. So we will be getting a, uh, a price, hopefully, that will be reasonable for folks, as reasonable as we can get would be for sewer. Noreen? Uh, um, <clears throat> I have one more thing in general on, on the April 19th meeting, but since we got into this topic, um, and that is part of my concern. Um, I've been asking about this number for years, Chris. If we could just get a breakdown of, of how it got to be stated this way. Um, on the you know comparative connection cost, mm -hmm. for many years we've been using the figure of $510 per year based on 70,000 gallons per year. I mean, I know my water usage is 30,000 gallons a year. I know there are a lot of homes that are one person or two person homes. There's a lot of homes where people go away for four or five months in the winter. Um, I mean, I don't know if that 70,000 gallons includes commercial or doesn't include uh, people with pools or irrigation, but if it's, if it's slanted high, you know, we shouldn't be printing it and, and telling people that. And the other thing I would like to know about what makes this up is, is all right, let's say it's 70,000, but what, what's the rate? I mean, I can divide it out. I mean, is that the current Howich water rate? Is that the Chatham water rate? Is the water rate gonna be exactly the same as the sewer rate? I don't remember ever having that discussion. So if somebody could give me a breakdown on that figure, I would appreciate it. So we, we can certainly look at that. My, my belief is probably going to be that if we do a X amount of gallons total in the system divided by 10,000 customers, and that's where they probably come up with the average. I think. Which is not reflective of, of the reality that if you're a, uh, you know, a, a, a couple uh, that's in a house that don't have a lot of kids, you, you're going to use a different amount of water. I, I think like the 350,000 that we use for the, the um, home value, we try to pick a point that makes some sense. So that probably is the 70,000 gallons. It's probably more for a family of five, if you would, and not necessarily for a family of two. But My you know. point is, is at this point, that was great for you know five years ago, but I feel that at this point, we should have numbers that are more reflective of the 650 homes, residential homes that we're dealing with. We haven't really talked about the commercial aspects at all. I think it's pretty uh, easy. I, um, well, excuse me, I think it's pretty easy to point people to the water bill, which they get, you know, twice a year. That very clearly on it, if I remember correctly, identifies your usage. Well, um, I, I think it would be better to have an average down there, you know. I mean, that's... Larry? Yeah, yeah I agree with Noreen. I, uh, that, that, to me, is the worst case. I looked at my own water bill, and last year, for instance, it was about 38,000 gallons. And, and if you do the, uh, just arithmetic, that's seven cents a gallon is what they were, to get to that... 510. So I think for my neighborhood, it's probably better figure would be about 380 rather than 510. So somehow we need to explain that, that the 70,000 was based on a uh, possibly a worst case going forward. But, uh, you know, my case would be, be a fair amount less than that. Okay. Uh, let's move along, if you don't mind. Uh, Chris uh, Clark is here. And Chris, we've moved your item from... Um, Number four, update from the town administrator down uh, to uh, number 5C, if you will, before we introduce Megan. Uh, how are things going? Can you give us a little update? Yeah, uh, actually, we have uh, quite a bit of activity, as I'm sure people are uh, very much aware. Uh, the 70 sheets or 75 sheets that show the, uh, the specific details of where the pipe is going to be in the street. Uh, and that was shared with the, the group on the 19th. Uh, that information is available. Uh, I had the, the folks from uh, CDM were in, in my office on Friday. We continue to have uh, integration meetings uh, with the uh, folks in Chatham. Uh, so we're working through the details on that. Um, and Chatham is putting a pipe in Queen Anne Road. And the question is, okay, well, who can hook up from you know, on the Chatham side, because Queen Anne Road is a boundary, so you have Harwich on one side and Chatham on the other. We don't need two pipes. Uh, believe it or not, they put two water pipes in uh, some of these streets, so uh, the more coordination we can have, we can avoid some of that duplication of effort by the two communities. 
I, I think we have a, a, a strong level of communication. Uh, so we are doing that. Uh, on Friday, I got my first inclination of uh, where the pump stations need to go. So now I have my uh, work assignment. I think that once the, uh, the town meeting is concluded and the uh, election, uh, the ballot is uh, successfully passed, uh, then I'll get started on meeting with the, uh, the residents about the, uh, the pump station. I would say that I, I thought that they did a, a nice job, uh, CDM, locating them in areas where they're not heavily populated and that are fairly wooded. So we should be able to kind of mask and, and hide those as much as we can. We have had some discussion about whether they should be above ground or underground in, in terms of the substation or the pump stations. And uh, I'd like to get a little better sense uh, for, for both, you know, both of those and, and kind of see. I think what we will do is try to decide from a staff level what makes sense above ground or, or sub, uh, uh, subsurface. If it is above ground, then it's a question of, uh, we could certainly do screening, or do people want to have a little shed that looks like a little shed in their yard? Uh, so we, you know, those are the, the decision points that we are at now. Uh, just in terms of a, a couple other updates, uh, you know, I'm a little bit concerned at some of the material and some of the questions. Uh, after last Monday night selectman's meeting, you know, I had a, a resident came up <clears throat> and said that um, she had heard that the information out there is somehow we were punishing East Harwich first. <laughs> and, you know, I don't, I, I just want to kind of clear, clear the record a little bit in, in terms of some of these things. And I, I think where she was kind of alluding to uh, is that, you know, why East Harwich first? We have a lot of literature that's out there. Uh, we get to take advantage of the Chatham facility. Uh, it is an area where we already have our water pumps there, our, our well water uh, in that area. So it, it makes sense to, to do that uh, early phases. But all elements of the town that are part of that 48 to 50 percent that need to be sewered will be sewered as we, as we go. Uh, the other element was on the, um, somehow they thought that other people or other parts of town were going to be connected, that we were going to pay for the connection costs as part of the project, and we weren't in East Harwich. Uh, that is not the case. The, the $240 million is to put the pipes in the roadway and just in the roadway. How people get it from their house to connect into the roadway is going to be uh, up to them in, in each uh, circumstance throughout the eight phases, and we're not doing something different uh, for phase for phase two. I think those were a, a couple of the, the comments that I had heard. I did go on Friday to, uh, I, I, I know uh, I was un unable to make the men's breakfast, <coughs> but had able uh, backup uh, there to, to kind of cover that. Uh, I did go to the women's breakfast on uh, Friday, probably about 50 plus people. I thought a lot of good questions. Some of those questions that they're getting from some of these uh, sites that are really misinformation, uh, those questions were brought up. So I, I was appreciative of the opportunity to be able to uh, answer some of those and, and kind of set the record straight. Uh, some of it was why are we having everyone pay and only sewering a, a portion. Uh, you know, as, as indicated, we all create the, the issue, so therefore we all should be part of the uh, solution to pay for it. In terms of those that are selected, we're, we're doing something that we're cleaning up to the point where we have to clean up and not the entire town. Now, Chatham made a different decision. They decided to do the entire town. That is well above and beyond what they're regulatorily required to do, but that was a decision that, that the Chatham folks made. We're doing what needs to be done, uh, and even at that, $240 million is, is a, uh, certainly a, a big request. I do think that some of the questions, too, from Friday about, you know, why are we doing this? So I did bring up about the Conservation Law Foundation. It's not something that the town just decided, well, we need to, we need to do. Uh, the Conservation Law Foundation has compelled the, um, the federal government to have Boston Harbor be cleaned up within 10 years, and that was a multi-billion dollar project, and this is the same group that wants to see the Cape be cleaned up. So I, I do think that there are a, a lot of resources that are available <coughs> online and certainly in the office. So if people want to avail themselves of that information, we have it out there available for them. <coughs> we really appreciate that comment, those comments. Does anybody have any questions for Chris? 
Okay. Just ask if we all set for town meeting, just since that's what's coming up on Monday. Yeah, in terms of um, <coughs> one thing, thank you for that too. Uh, I, I do want to, in Friday when I had meetings with the folks in Chatham, uh, the numbers have changed. The numbers have gone a little bit higher. So we are, uh, instead of the 22, we're closer to 24 million dollars. Well, we're at 24 million dollars. And I, I got a little bit of why is that. And I did ask my, uh, my folks in Chatham when we had our meeting on Friday just to make sure that, th that their uh, situation was similar to ours. Uh, they did use planning numbers from six years ago to generate the cost <coughs> of the pump station and the piping. Uh, so six years earlier, and we're looking at doing a project two years ahead. So we have eight years of uh, you know, period that we're trying to catch up on. So that period has given us an opportunity. CDM has used their own estimators and a, another group of estimators to look at the project. They're familiar with what Orleans has done. They're familiar with what Fall River, I believe they were the ones that did the Fall River estimate and those numbers have come in on target. So we are updating those numbers. Uh, the reason why those numbers have changed is because quite honestly, they're more accurate now uh, than they were at that time. Uh, certainly the economy changes, prices change, and, and things change. So having an up-to-date number that we can rely upon is important. For town meeting, I know why. I went to FinCom on last Thursday night, uh, and the Finance Committee has a, a person assigned, or they're assigning people to the articles. I know the Board of Selectmen have uh, individuals assigned. If there was something that the committee wanted, I would encourage uh, you to send uh, any PowerPoint presentations to respond specifically to questions, I think is the, the approach that we're trying to take. Uh, so if people do have questions at town meeting, we will have, and we do have already, I believe a thousand copies of each of those uh, pieces of material, the two page and then the one individual pages. So those will be available for handouts at, at town meeting. And in terms of the motion language, it has been reviewed already by bond council. I'm going to review that today and hopefully have that finalized. So okay. I think we're in pretty good shape for, for a town meeting. Chris, can I just ask the, um, when we got started with this whole thing back in January or something, and that, you know, we had that thing about what we learned since that January 16th meeting or whatever, mm -hmm. it was the first time that we, had, we, we tried to identify what the interest cost difference is between going to the state revolving fund versus going general bond. Yes. You know, is that still a six million dollar number? Have you had a chance to look at I that? I have. Or? Actually, I, I appreciate the opportunity for that. Uh, when you take um, a, a 20, 20 million dollar project over 30 years, you know, what is the interest cost? And the interest cost is in the neighborhood of, of 20 million dollars. And if you go from 2%, which is what we have for state revolving loan, and go out into the marketplace, and you're at potentially a three or 4%, if you're at 4%, you've doubled that cost. So the savings of going now in the sequence that we're going now is probably in the neighborhood of $20 million and, and not six. And that, that again is basically double the amount of uh, interest. So instead of 2%, when you go from two to four, it, it's about $20 million. So, so it you're has a real significance. So you're comfortable that the Delta would be $20 million in interest costs? Yes. And I, I did that <coughs> myself on some uh, material I have, and then I also asked Carol to, to do that. So. I mean, I was I was convinced that six, so with 20, <coughs> it's even more compelling. It's more dramatic. Yeah. On, on that point, um, so you're saying it would be 20 million over the course of the project? 20 million for this phase. Oh, for this phase, phase okay. All right. 20 million in interest savings by going state revolving fund versus right. general bond, I mean, general municipal bond. That's the question. I think okay. that's the answer. Okay. Um, town meeting topics? Briefly. Okay. So I was wondering if this map will be available. I printed this off the website. This is the map. And um, I didn't see it on the handout table at administration. Yeah, we have, uh, they, they blew it up so people can actually read it. It's at the, uh, I believe we have it by the town clerk's office. We have it right. over at the community center and we will have it at a town meeting for people to be able to see. Yeah, so poster. it will be a poster, a form. poster but form. But I was wondering if there could be some handouts of this for people to take away. Sure. You know. Sure, we can uh, do the handouts for that. <coughs> see it on the back of one of these. Yeah. 
It's different than the one in the. One in the yeah, back, the one in the, the back doesn't the have the street list. Yeah. We can right. put the street list on there. Yeah, and 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 it's a lot more detailed. Um, also, just briefly on on town meeting, um, and in reference to the April nineteenth meeting. One question that um, very well may come up will be, you know, I can't afford this, how can you help me? And I know, Chris, you've been <clears throat> giving a presentation on the existing um, methods of exemption through the assessing department. I will just say, you know, as we go forward, that wasn't really the original idea that this committee put forward. That is, you know, it's being referred to as a safety net, but. It's only really for people over 65. Our original concept was to check with legal and see if that could include everyone. And also our original concept was to have the um, break-offs of how much money you can um, you know, make each year, you know, to consider having them be higher. You know, these are things we wouldn't know if they were legal, you know, to spend taxpayers' money that way, but um, would want to know. And also, if you have somebody who currently is getting an exemption because they're over 65 and they're in a certain income bracket, and now they have to hook up to the wastewater system, and they're already getting 1,500, I mean, there's no break for them either. That's not, that's not the case. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of, well, just to answer a couple. Uh, number one, and maybe I didn't make this clear in, in the presentation, if, if people go through the county then they, the county operates the same way we do. It's a governmental entity. So they're able to go through under Chapter 83 is the, the sewer statutes, if you want to refer to it as that. They have the ability where it's a betterment that they can do deferrals. They have options that are available. And that's not um, age restricted. That, so they have a, a wide range of opportunities if they go through the county because the county is doing it as a, as a betterment. <coughs> In terms of what I was alluding to, in terms of the, uh, for the assessors, what's available to people right now, you can have, and it is age restricted and it is income restricted, that's not me, and it's state law it makes this stuff up, and that you can have that and you can get up to $1,500 uh, off of your taxes. You can also do on top of it, if you have like a blind exemption or, or different exemptions, you don't always, you can't put them on top of each other, you can just take one of them. Uh, in this circumstance, you are eligible to take that senior exemption at 1500 and do the senior work off, which had the angel provision, which is on for uh, town meeting. So if there is truly someone that, that can't do the work uh, or can't participate and, and volunteer, they could have someone do that work for them. And then you could go to as high as $3,000 off of your taxes. And what the law does, it does have a cap on that that you can only have 90% of your taxes be not, not paid. So th there is a cap, but 90% off of a $3,000 <coughs> tax bill uh, is, is certainly, I, I think, a, a benefit. I, and I did use the term, because those were my slides, of a safety net to try to create a safety net for, for some folks. And I think if I remember the, uh, the outlay for five years at 5% of a $7,000 bill was about $56 a month or 675 a year. So to get s almost $3,000 in savings off of a $675 bill is where I was trying to go. And that is year to year. That's not, yep. not a one-time. Um, <clears throat> don't want to beat up all the options <coughs> right here. Just wanted to state our original that was discussed at this meeting. You mentioned the deferral on the county. You know, not everybody wants to go with a deferral as opposed to an exemption. That's, that's you know, a very different decision. Um, but also on the other aspects, the angel provision and the other thing, unfortunately, they're still limited to seniors, you mm -hmm. know, at this point. So that's not a safety net in any way for the younger working class. So again, I just wanted to bring it back home to what our original um, thought was. Maybe sometime we can write it up and see if, um, see if it's legal. That was our first question. Thank you, Noreen. Save the best till last. <coughs> We have a superstar here, and uh, someone we've been uh, eager to speak before, so that's Megan Eldridge from the Board of Health. Megan, thank you very, very much for giving us some of your expertise and time this morning. Well, I'm, I'm here to talk about how to access records uh, through our website and other ways. Um, I know I, I did a little, here we go. 
um, a little of this at the April 19th meeting. Um, this will go into a little bit more detail. Um, if you have other questions <coughs> afterwards, let's see. What am I doing here? That's a great idea. Let's make, give Megan the floor until she's completely finished, then we'll ask we her can, some questions. Yeah, we can talk about um, real estate transfers and that sort of thing. Okay. So there's lots of ways you can access your records of your septic system uh, location. We have records of some engineer drawings, and some of those engineer drawings will have a site plan that includes where your water line is, where your gas line is, where your driveway is. Um, and sometimes we don't have an engineer drawing, and you'll be re relying on a hand-drawn septic location, which we refer to as an as-built. Um, that's as built, how your system was as built in your property. And that, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what an as built looks like. <clears throat> They're not as pretty, uh, but they, they will show you some information. Another piece of information that we could have is a real estate inspection report. That is a long 20 page report. It has lots of information in it, but it also has a location of septic system as built. Um, in some cases, the properties will have no file at all. Uh, that is most likely a cesspool system. And I'll tell you how to figure out where that system is as well. You can access your records by visiting our department. We're located on the second floor of Town Hall, uh, the community development window. Any staff member is able to take your address and pull a file for you. Uh, we can make copies or you're welcome to take pictures with your phone if you'd rather not um, pay the five cents for the copy or the three dollars if you want the larger copy. Um, there are some staff hours where technical staff's available. It's usually between 8.30 and 10 in the morning when there is a health department staff member available to help you decipher the plans. They, they, look, they look like site plans to me but to the average homeowner you may not be able to figure out what's what um, so we're, we're always welcome to, to help you with that if you can't make it down to us we are able to talk to you over the phone we can give you some basic information if your systems in the front yard in the backyard um, we can't really help you with with exactly where you should put things because we, we'd need to talk to you in person um, get get an idea of where your driveway is, where your prized possession shrubs are, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's best probably to give us a call to find out if we have a file at all. I wouldn't want you to come down to the department and find out you have a cesspool, waste your time to come down and we don't have anything. Um, if you do run into that situation and you think you have a cesspool and there's no record on file, the best way to find out if your system's in the backyard or the front yard is to go into your basement and find out where that sewer line exits the foundation. And that, that's really the best information we can give you. If you want to find out exactly where that cesspool is, you, you'll, you'll need to do some digging, some probing, maybe hire someone to, to do that work. Um, in order to hook up to the sewer line, you don't need to know exactly where that cesspool is right now. When they go to abandon it, at the time of hookup, your contractor will be able to find that. The most important information is uh, where that line exits your foundation. We have been scanning information and having it available in electronic form. So you can call us, give us your email, or, or email us directly at thishealth at town.harwich.ma.us and we could email you your site plan. That would save you a trip. It would also save you um, some copies as well. All you'll really need to give us is your street address and we'll be able to email you back your site plan if we have one. The best way I think for anyone to access information is through the online property website. This way you can look at not only health records but building files conservation files. Um, it'll give you a whole permit history of your entire property. Um, if you go to our website, you can click on, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a link that will show you where to find your online 
permit information. And it looks like this. So this over here on the left side is the health department landing page. When you go to the town website, you go to health department, this is what you'll see. And if you click on the highlighted, I don't know if this is on, yeah, mm -hmm. right here, right underneath that map, which is the up-to-date map with the uh, addresses on the left side. If you click on that, <clears throat> you'll come to the page on the right side, which you'll have options and you can click on the, um, a link to blow up the map and you can look at it, all the street names and all of the connections. You can look at the presentation from the April 19th meeting and then you can learn how to use the online property website, which if you haven't used it before will be your first step. And then you can also go straight to the online property website. So once you've learned how to access the online property website, you'll get to this page and you'll want to click on Board of Health Search Applications. Just click that link. And then you'll come to this next page and you'll put in your street number right up here and your street name. It's really important to just put in Main and not Main Street. If it's Uncle Vini's, you just put in Uncle V. Um, the system is finicky and, and sometimes won't come up with, with all of the records if you, if you try to put in your exact address. So once you've put in your address and your, no your number at the bottom of the page, you'll come up with the search results. And there's lots of different kinds of septic records that could show up. And in the description aisle over here, it'll tell you what those are. Um, RET means real estate transfer inspection. So that is a 20 page report. Um, well is a well permit drinking or irrigation and then sewage permits have all the records you're looking for as far as permits, site plans, as built. Then we have test holes, uh, trench permits, and a couple of older sewage permits. Um, something to remember is sometimes properties have had more than one sewage permit. So something put was put in in 19 80 and our records are filed by the date, uh, the year, and then the permit number. So this is uh, 1980, permit number 44. This is something happened in 80 and then something happened again in 1995. It could have been a whole new system or it could have just been a repair. Um, so this is 9556. And then up here we have another permit for 993.82. So you'll want to start with the most recent and you'll click on that blue link that says record number and it will take you to that particular record. So we clicked on a record and up here, it doesn't show very well, but it says um, <clears throat> record info and it has a little blue tab that you click on and it comes up with a drop down menu and under there is attachments. And you click on attachments and it will show you what your attachments are that you're able to open and download. So we have site, again, the description column will show, uh, this is under a, a septic, a sewage permit. We have a site plan, an as-built, a certificate of compliance, the actual permit application, and a floor plan. So this particular record had quite a few good pieces of good information. So if you click on the blue link again on the left side, you'll be able to open up a PDF and your PDF will have whatever it is that you clicked on. So this was the site plan and it, the site plan will show a road and the prop, the, this is a driveway and you have a water line and then your septic system. So one of the questions I had after the meeting on April 19th was, this is my, my property. I have no idea what this means. Um, so 
what we would be able to do is talk you through all of this. And this is a property line. Your actual house is in the middle. Um, there are topo lines. So these are um, topographical <coughs> elevations, something that you don't really need to worry about in this case. But if it's, if it's difficult for you to understand, give us a call and we will walk you through it. And also, you'll be able to tell in the, in the right-hand corner of this plan was the date that it was drawn. Some people want to know how old their system is, and that's one way to tell. This is what I was talking about as far as an as-built or uh, hand-drawn. That's part of a real estate transfer inspection. These are hand-drawn rough drafts of of where the system's located and they're usually drawn by the installer and sometimes a system is put in in a different location than the plan. Um, <clears throat> that happens because of various reasons but usually it's because the installer gets there and there's a large rock or a tree or something that, that wasn't shown on the plan and they need to make some adjustments. So if there is an as-built, it's important to reference that in addition to your site plan. Um, and these are numbers in feet from two fixed points, and they, um, when you take two tape measures and go from A to C and B to C, you'll find the cover of your septic tank. Uh, same thing with the distribution box, and this out here is a leaching pit. So that's how you can find your components. These are not to scale, so when you're out standing at the road you can't really say oh my tank is 10 feet off from the pro from the from the foundation because they're they're not to scale so you'll need to use a couple of tape measures to find things some useful information about the online property it, website is that the attachments are all printable savable emailable uh, you can send them off to your engineer that if you've hired one um, we have the street listing of the phase two map on our website and <clears throat> we are trying to scan all of our records that are in this phase two, hopefully within the next six months or so, so everyone who's in this phase two will be able to access them online and will be able to quickly email them out if you're unable to access them online. Um, I have talked with Dan at the water department and we are going to set up some workshops um, for the phase two community. We'll be doing them more than once. Um, I found that people, some people would prefer to talk individually rather than in a large group. So um, we'll be able to assist homeowners with decisions on where they should request the stub from the road. And that's it. Well, that's great. Uh, let's do this. I know everybody has three questions. So let's do your top question and then we'll do a kind of a round robin and come back around again. Uh, do we have you for another 10 or 15 minutes? You do. Thank you. Who would like to start? Peter? Um, thank you for putting this together. I think it's important to point out, though, that the average person out there, average homeowner, they will be required to have a professional engineer lay out their, their plan, if you will, for connecting to the sewer, and that would include abandoning the existing septic. So if someone doesn't have the curiosity of knowing all this information, as long as they hire a professional, they're going to come and access the same information. Um, so what I don't want people to do is get, oh, I got to go get a computer, I have to go online, I got to figure out what this stuff is. Because once you do that, what do you do with it other than knowing, okay, it's under my shed or it's, you know, it, it's under my driveway or something like that. I don't want the process to look like it's daunting when in reality the average person is going to you know get a hold of a, a registered professional engineer to lay out design their system if you will including the abandonment of what's there so you know i i think that for those that are really curious they're going to get into this and it's going to be great and you're going to get a lot of you know questions like i'm stuck here how do i get to there but the average person is sitting out there i think doesn't need at least today to jump right into this unless you know they're going to add on to their house or something like that because the professionals will do that at the right time. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So the pipes coming down my street and my cross the street neighbor, I can look up to his house. My house is quite a ways down below the level of the street. Should I worry about 
the elevation of my property at this point vis-a-vis -vis the pipe in the street? If, if on that map, that original map, the, the, the sewer line, the main going through the road is a gravity sewer, the engineering company has already shot the elevation of your sill, of your, of your foundation. So they have determined that your property can reach that main sewer main by gravity. So you wouldn't necessarily need a, a grinder pump unless you have um, some plumbing in the basement. And in that case, you can still use an ejector pump, which is in your house. So according to CDM Smith, if there's a, a gravity sewer line that runs down the, the road, your house should be able, that, that sewer line will be deep enough in the road where even though your property is low, should be able to reach that sewer line. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I'm going to save most of my questions till I get on the website and, and play with it a little bit, but I'm curious. Um, is there a, are other fields searchable besides um, streets? And my real question would be, um, is there a field that's searchable like the age of the septic tanks? Like, could I, can I put in, I want to see all septic tanks over 30 years old in your list? regardless of the property address, just right. in all the town. You could, you could search, um, you can change the date range, okay. and then you can search by record type. Mm -hmm. So if you changed the date range to only have things that are more than 30 years old, you would have to change the, the record type to what you're looking for, so a septic system or disposal system construction permit. Otherwise you'll get building permits Historic so, permits. So like I would that. want the qualifier to be septic system? You'd want it to say disposal system construction permit. Okay. Disposal. And we would only have what's currently in a cellar. Anything that didn't make it into a cellar would not be part of that record? Everything will show up. Um, okay. So all of our historic records have been transferred to a cellar, <coughs> but they all won't have an attachment with a picture. Right. So it'll just show that there was a permit from 1975. So just if we wanted to get a sense of, um, or, or actually it might, might be a better question to ask, <coughs> how many septic systems are less than five years old? That might be a more timely um, question, but that could be done with that same methodology. It could, I, it, it's not, a, I don't think you'll come up with a real easy way to find that information. Mm -hmm. What we have done in order to, to scan all of these records is find the, the street address and correlate it with their septic permit number, which mm -hmm. is the year it was put in or repaired. Mm -hmm. So we do have a list of all of these addresses with the permit number, which has a 1999, 1973. Right. So we would know how old things are. You would know by the record you have. So actually that record, if we went into the 600 homes, into their record, that information of the original septic would be there. It would just be a more tedious yes. method. Yeah. Right. All right, I'll save my questions till I okay. play with it. Thank you. Anne? Um, since uh, my mind is moving toward how do we, how do we put together the how-to book, I'm gonna say Peter's question is, his comment is excellent. The, this is a, for a professional engineer, except I'd like to have some insight into the accepts. So, I might come now if I want to put in a deck, if I, you know, what, can you give me a list of probable reasons why people might want to come now and start evaluating that? Well, one reason is the sewer main is, is going to be constructed in the road before you're required to hook up. And when that sewer main goes in the road, they're going to ask you where you want your stub. So where you want your stub is where you want it to go straight, otherwise you're gonna be paying for, for more of a, a route to go into your foundation. So y even if you, you're you three years out, you're gonna wanna know where you want that stub to be. So you'll wanna know where your water line is, where your system is. So you won't necessarily need to start the engineering for it, but the company that puts the sewer main in it, line in the road is gonna give you a card and a stake and say, where do you want your sewer main? we're gonna stake it out right here. So one reason is for that. You wanna know where, where things are before that happens. Um, another reason is if you are planning an addition or you're planning on finishing your basement, 
and you want to know where your sewer line is, if you don't know where that is already, um, if you're planning on building an outdoor kitchen or something like that where you're you don't want to have to disturb the ground underneath where your system is after you've done that work. So, thank you. Peter? I'm good. I think this is um, far more information than I thought was available, quite frankly, online. So I think mm -hmm. this is going to be very helpful going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with Maureen. You have to get in there and start, you know, yeah. start playing around. It's kind of like the assessor's field cards. you got to get in there. And mm -hmm. they have the same issue. They're feeling to type certain stuff in for, mm -hmm. you know, a street name and up at Pops or something. Right. So sometimes you got to try a few times. But, mm -hmm. you know, the devil's in the details. So good information. What do you see as the advantages and disadvantages of meeting with you and your staff one-on-one -on -one versus one of these uh, workshops? Um, really depends on personality. Um, if you're not comfortable talking in a, a group or a, even a small group where you have <clears throat> specific questions that are really specific to your property and your, your own situation, we're always available at the counter or over the phone to make to make some recommendations for you. Um, <clears throat> if you're under a time crunch and you can't wait for a community meeting and you need some information right away, we're, we're available. Um, the community meetings that we plan on having, we will have computers there, so we will be able to pull up your site plan um, and give you some specific recommendations at that time. Yeah, and uh, excuse me, I would guess if people brought their laptops, it would be Wi-Fi so mm -hmm. they could try it themselves and then yep. you could help them out right there. That's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Noreen? Well, I, I, I got another question from listening to your answer, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was when you were talking about the placement of the stubs. So um, by the original, um, you know, really great projection that CDM Smith gave us, um, I believe assuming su successful vote, successful bid, um, and a few other variables, construction would actually start in May of 2019. So if you were lucky enough to be the first home on the first street where the pipe is passing you, you could be asked in May of 2019, where do you want your pipe to go? That's correct. So that's not, that's a little different than the way we've been framing it, saying, you know, you wouldn't really have to do a lot for a few years. You would have to do some thinking, not yet knowing. And it asked a question in the past about the order of streets. We wouldn't ask that today, but that could become very important over the next few months because there could be groups of people asked in just 12 months what what they want to do with their property. Right, and it. I don't want to scare people and say you have to know where you want where you want your stub to go because mm -hmm. the the company that will put this in the road will also need to do their due diligence on where is your water line so they know that it's 10, 10 feet away from it um, <clears throat> and they have most likely done this many times before so they will be able to give it a, a good eyeball on where they should put the stub um, but they'll want your input or the homeowner's input if they are planning an addition, they'll want to put it on one side or the other, or if they have a garden or something that they don't exactly. want to ruin. So. Yeah, I don't even really think it's about additions. If your septic's in the back, you've got to make a decision about one side, the other side, or, or through your too. cellar. <laughs> that, that's, a, you know, that's a major decision if you've got a deck and rose bushes and mm -hmm. gardens and everything else, on, you know, mm -hmm. addition or not. So thank you. Um, I guess the only thing that still remains uh, in my mind is some of the, uh, the questions about um, where existing pipes can be fitted with an internal pipe uh, to make the connection. And um, that's really a very detailed uh, I, the, the water department was very helpful in describing this to me, but I'm still a little concerned about the actual connections and their security over time. Mm -hmm. You want the connection to be a solid connection. And uh, that's something I think we need to keep an eye on. Um, uh, I, I think it's an unanswered question right now. 
So um, I'll just raise it uh, as I did previously with the sequence. Uh, if, you, if it's a surprise that you're the first house because your street and your neighbors are first, um, I don't think we want that to be something we pop on the first group. Um, and that should be something we can avoid, but it's something to really keep an eye on and make sure all the communications from the engineering firms um, are uh, given in a really timely manner. So that's my only comment on that. Great. <coughs> Anyone else on the committee for Megan? Megan, again, thank you very, very much. Okay. Anyone from the audience who might want to ask a question of Megan or Chris? Thank you. Uh, back to the agenda, correspondence and announcement item number seven, please. Thank you. Um, <coughs> yes. Uh, <coughs> I'll just mention that we had talked about having a few banks and even though it's, you know, early on, banks can't really talk about what financing vehicles they might have ready three years from now, but they are very interested in, um, you know, talking to the public and um, getting information out there and so we did hear from three of them that they would be happy to come and do presentations we've scheduled that for our June 21st evening meeting and the fourth bank um, uh, playing a little phone tag with but we may have a fourth by then uh, based on a um, contact um, Peter picked up so we have definitely got three so that's definitely on for June 21st and um, uh, we might have all four that have premises in Howard. So one way or the other, we'll have some information available that night. That's it. Any other announcements or correspondence? Could, could, I, could I just Peter. ask a question? When's our next meeting after uh, town meeting and subsequently the, the ballot? Our next meeting is, is booked for May 17th, Thursday night, 6 p.m. I don't anticipate it would be a long meeting. We don't really have like any presentations on the agenda. It's really meant to discuss what happened between town meeting and the ballot. Right, assuming success or even if we don't succeed at town meeting and the ballot, I think a meeting or two after that, we need to say what's our strategy, what's our right. plan for the next year or whatever. And right. Hopefully it's a positive right. thing and we go in a certain direction, yeah. but we need to lay out what we want to get done uh, mm -hmm. in addition to the guidebook and that kind of thing. So, so could we uh, make that addendum to the calendar uh, planning to include, uh, be included in that 17th meeting? Yeah. Um, sure. And anything else, uh, any other agenda items for the 17th meeting you want to have considered? Okay, so formal announcement then, our next meeting. Uh, yes, go ahead. Well, on that note, um, I was gonna wait till June, but if we're talking about planning, we might as well get off on the right foot, <laughs> which is that um, these third Thursday evenings are not working out for a lot of people. Um, people have been struggling to make them and, you know, I think we just did it, we wanted an evening meeting, we didn't, you know, work with the cameras. So I don't know if people could send me, um, you know, what nights, we still want an evening meeting, you know, each month. But I don't know if people could send me, Mondays are out because of the Board of Selectmen. Um, if they could send me what's good on Tuesday, Wednesdays, or Thursdays for them, being first one, second one, third one, Maybe I can have that information collated for that meeting so that starting in July, we're already booked through June with what we have, but we could maybe pick one. You know, I know we'll lose Larry. I know it's tough for Chris. It's tough for a lot of us. Well, um, when we initially set up, the, um, I had actually talked to the Recreation Department because they have a wonderful idea of conflicts with people who might want to uh, come from the town. I can't speak to all of our agendas. But they said that, uh, in their opinion, Wednesday night was one of the best times because there were the fewest conflicts with voters. 
Uh, and so I'll simply throw that out now, and then people can perhaps think about their own schedules and see whether a Wednesday uh, is something that works for them as well. I don't have a, a preference for anything other than it not being Monday. Wednesday would be fine. But also to keep in mind, like, is it the first Wednesday or the second Wednesday? You know, because we have to book the room. There are other meetings in there. Is it the first Thursday or, you know, things like that? When does FinCon meet? So if you guys send me all the information on when you don't have commitments, then I will put it together. And maybe we can pick a better night so we don't lose our liaison. And you're, and you're excluding, <coughs> excluding Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I was thinking of excluding those, yes. Um, uh, I was thinking of adding them myself. But I, mean, I was thinking of adding them myself. Oh, really? Well, you send me that information. We'll see where it lands on my chat. Well, if you want to get people to show up. Yeah. Um, but on, I understand, you know, yeah. with uh, town workers and that kind of thing, we have an issue. Well, actually, Fridays, you know, doesn't seem viable. I thought about Saturdays. The only problem is we're getting into summer. And when you have company and right. summer and people... Um, Saturday's a tough one, I know. I mean, but send it to me if you want. I, I, I personally think that sometime in the summer, assuming success again, that we may want to take one or two Saturdays. Absolutely. And, and just say that our committee is available, whether it's this room right. or on the street yep. corner, mm. from 8.30 to 11, if you want to right. come in and just yak to us, or if we can help you in any way and, yep. you know, whatever. I, you know, I, I think that's great. And, and these meetings that I'm talking about is only what we've kind of said as a consensus sure. to reduce our meetings from three a month to yeah, two yeah. a month. Yeah, three, yeah. You know, so one morning, one evening. Then adding anything on, um, I think, is wonderful. Right. Okay, anything else on that? So yeah. we will send information to uh, Noreen on yeah. that. Mr. Kim, could I just to make an observation? Yes, sir. My name is Paul Cuddy. Um, I've been in this town for many, many years. Um, in fact, I bought my first lot on Pleasant Bay Road for $2,000 and built a 32 by 24 house. And when a guest came out, they wanted to know if they needed some sort of uh, uh, documentation that they were leaving a certain area. <laughs> and things have changed dramatically, obviously, since then. And the only committee that I ever served on um, was the golf committee. And at, at that time, uh, Dave DeFerry, who uh, has since deceased, uh, and I put together a nine-hole golf course for the town for $340,000 complete. All the work, nine holes, and we thought it was a great idea. And we brought it to the town for three different times, and each time it was turned down because they said, don't need another golf course. This was 1970 in 70, uh, 1970s. And it, it, it just didn't sail. And if you look today, of if that had happened, what a wonderful thing for the people who like to play nine holes or if you're repairing the golf course. And the second thing that happened, and it was around the same time, the federal government was paying 90% of all sewering, including your transfer stations and including your the the, uh, the 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 uh, buildings that would accept the waste and treat the waste, ninety percent, and the town granted fifty thousand dollars to the selectmen at that time, and they never did a thing about it, and look what a difference that has made to many towns that took advantage of that, and over the years, um, I really haven't been on committees, but I, as Larry knows and everything, I've been a a resource person because I'm an idea person, a resource person, and, and have had the opportunity to go to committees and suggest certain things and ideas. And I've known Peter for many years, and some of you I, I don't recognize, um, but um, constantly throughout those years, um, I found myself attending the meetings. And when you brought up the fact of you're saving 2%, that's a lot of money. But I looked at it right away as look at the money you saved by 20 years ago, when when uh, Jim uh, Stewart, uh, what was his last name? I can't remember. It was, um, he was the ch chairman at the time, and he was a, an engineer. Frank Sampson? Frank Sampson. Oh, yeah. Oh, Frank yeah. Sampson put 10 years in. Yeah. Now, if you paid Frank a loan for the time and the hours he put in, and then add all the committees and Peter DeBacca and everyone all through this whole period of time, 
someone has to stand up for you and say, congratulations to you and all the people that came before you and say, thank you. And most of the time, you don't get a thank you. That just doesn't happen. And I thought today, I said it'd be a time for me to say at 82 years of age, it's a good time to come in there and say, thank you for all you've done. And throughout those years, um, I have come up with suggestions and ideas. Um, I, uh, I was at Frank Sampson's swan song when he was leaving after being in 10 years. And at that meeting, I asked Dave Young, I said, Dave, you're going to be sewering 200 houses in Chatham, 200 houses in, in Howwich, and you're building a sewer plant in East Howwich. I said, have you checked the amount of flow going from Pleasant Bay to Muddy Creek? And at that meeting, he said, no. So I said, is there a way you can determine of increasing the size of those pipes that are down there? Because I lived on Pleasant Bay Road for years. I moved to... to uh, Pilgrim Road in, in the 70s, and I was down there for the rest of the, my uh, time in Howitch, except for the last couple of years. And the following meeting, a month later, uh, at the end of the meeting, nothing was brought up by Dave, and I asked him, and I think you would remember it. He said, well, I did check, and I said, how much water is flowing up Muddy Creek right now? And he said, six inches. I said, if you increase the size and diameter of the pipes that go under Route 28, how much of a flow date can you get going up? And Frank and everyone are sitting there looking, you know, why didn't we think of that? And he said, 36 inches of water. The last question was the big one. What is that going to do to Muddy Creek? And I, and I said right at the meeting, I said, that's going to shut down the factory that is up Muddy Creek. Well, you should have looked at the people's faces that live there and everything, and they all thought, where's the factory up on Muddy Creek? And they asked the question of me. And I said, when that salt water goes up Muddy Creek, it's going to take care of all of the nitrates, all of the things, all the damage that's being created by Muddy Creek. And they said, well, how do you know that? I said, well, I live on Pilgrim Road. And every time there's a hurricane and the water came up Pilgrim Road, I lost my vegetable garden, I lost my shrubs, I lost my grass, and I lost my plants. And it filled the, the whole area between C Street and Pilgrim Road. And all the, the only thing that survived in that area was the eelgrass. The pine trees, everything died. And throughout the years, um, um, I've been active with, with Larry and the boards when something like this came, comes up because um, I, have, uh, I was a school principal. I have a, a, a construction supervisor's license. I have a broke his license, and I've done a lot of things, and been, been from, mo from all of those years, been one of the highest residential taxpayers in the town for all of those years, and try to give back to the community, you know, what it provided for me and for my daughter to grow up and become a lawyer, and, and uh, my grandchildren now are, are uh, doing well. One graduated from Boston College, the other's in law school, and I have so much to be thankful, and a wife of 57 years, um, and I have a lot to be thankful, and I've enjoyed this community, and very happy that um, I actually went down when they had an open house at the septic system, the, the plant in Chatham, and I talked to the, the, the head uh, supervisor there, and I said to him, how is this working out for you? And he said, we need more waste. He said, it, it's just we're working on 50% capacity, and that's when... <laughs> Larry heard what I was saying to people, and he called me. He says, can we have a meeting with you in the little room up here? And I said, sure. I, what was your idea? I said, Sh work a deal with them. Work a deal with them and ship the waste to Chatham. I said, the people at Chatham don't want that. <laughs> we don't want more waste, but it was a practical thing to do. And, and Larry and, and all the people, like the selectmen and everyone, jumped on that concept, and it has saved us many, many, millions of dollars and all that time that everyone puts in it, it, it is it no one realizes it they some people may watch on television and see but the selectmen all the way down through I, I, we've had so many people Jimmy Marsline I've known Jimmy my whole life in this town and he was a wonderful man and had wonderful ideas and gave so much to the town and I love the reports that went into the paper for Jimmy. 
And so we have so much to be thankful for that there are people like you who will put in that time and put in that effort. And, and, and there are many before you and I'm sure there'll be many after. But you know, you, this project started over 20 years ago. That's a long time. So you can think of the money that was saved, the time and effort that you all put in. And I say hats off to the final one. The reason I bring it up now, because you're very close and we want to make sure that it continues and it does go through because we love the Cape, we want to protect the Cape, and uh, the only way we can do it is not with money because we haven't got the money. We, are, we have hard-working people like all of you that, that contribute and, and do, do the jobs that are necessary, do them right, and put those hours in. So that's why I'm here today because I have paperwork on about everything that happened in this town. I have eight, eight, <laughs> four leaf, four draw in my man cave uh, uh, file cabinets. And I can pull up things from the, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, because I'm a saver on those. And I've always been, you know, once in a while I look at them and, and see the, these articles. So thank you. That's why I came today. And thank thanks for what you've done. Thank you, Paul. We are glad you came. There's a man, too, that, that has done a tremendous amount for this for the town. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good luck with uh, getting what you want. Bye now. Thank you. What's your pleasure? Move to adjourn. Second. All four. All Aye. four. In bed. Opposed. Passes. Make a stay behind. There you go. Thank you.